Mark chapter 7. We left Jesus. He's healing people. Chapter 7. Then came together unto him the Pharisees, and certain of the scribes, which came from Jerusalem. Uh-oh. Now trouble's going to happen. You already know they rejected him. We read in the last chapter, his hometowns rejected him. So, when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashed hands, they found fault. A moral sin his disciples had done because they did not wash their hands. It's denounced because it's against their rules. Go back in the in the law and find where you're to wash hands. It's in there, but when you're talking about Ill, illnesses, sicknesses, bleeding, leprosy, it's more for a doctor. And we just had Jesus healing a whole bunch of people. If they wanted to attack somebody for washing hands, way Mark is laid out attack Jesus for not washing his hands after dealing with sick people like you just see Jesus there he is you know if you ever been in a doctor's office that you know he comes in the room he goes to the sink washes his hands and you know on that the stuff that you put in your hands that probably five years later if I find out it causes cancer or whatever Jesus didn't do that and clean is good all right, I'm not telling you don't wash your hands. You don't know what's on your hands with germ, but clean is not becoming of God as far as the Pharisees are saying. God is not going to say, "All right, Peter, stand at the gate, take their names, and see if they wash their hands." This is not mom at the kitchen table or the dining room table. Ah, no, don't sit down. Go in the bathroom and wash your hands before you sit. That's not God. Mom doesn't want you sick because she doesn't want to take care of you. That's why she wants you to wash your hands before you eat. And then don't make anybody else at the table sick with the mud and talk, touching frogs or whatever you've been doing all day long. But see, this has become a religious rite. A religious tradition we're going to see. So, if you want to start a religion, start a religion that your hands must be washed to be saved. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands, now this is the law, off. That's frequent, not rarely, often. You ever seen people, you ever see somebody do that? Almost everything they do, they got to wash their hands. Sometimes you wonder, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. So it become a religious thing, a tradition not of God, but of the rule makers. I don't know, maybe, maybe they were involved in the stock of making soap in the water and all that, I don't know. And when they come from the market, the grocery store, the open air markets they had, except they wash... They eat not. But in the law said a man could go sit in a field and grab some get grapes and eat them before he journeys on. It says he can go up to a fig tree and grab some figs for his meal as he's walking down the road. He just couldn't take more than excess. Where did it say that? All right, before you grab the figs, wash your hands. It doesn't. And many other things there be which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots and brazen vessels at and of table. They're just neat freaks. Rules were set by man for service to God. Well, Jesus, go get your... Oh, wait a minute. Hold that trunk. The table down there is dirty. Wait for them to clean it, please. Hold it. Oh, wait a minute. We've got to hold off all God's time frame because someone didn't clean the table down there. Isn't this ridiculous? The disciples are in trouble because they didn't wash their hands. They didn't wash their hands when they were 
rubbing the, the grain of corn. Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of elders? I would assume Jesus didn't wash his hands either. I don't know. But it's easy to pick on the disciples now. But eat bread with unwashed hands. You notice how they just said, the traditions of the elders. They didn't tell Jesus it was God. This is ours. And you know Jesus is going to play on that? He answered and said unto them, Well have Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites. Now just jump over real quick to verse 14. When he had called all the people. This is no private assembly. The people are watching these Pharisees come up and throw their accusations. And Jesus, before these people, said, you hypocrites. You imagine you, you got an assembly of pastors and, and evangelists and missionaries together with, with a whole bunch of people there. And he walks up and says, you hypocrites. It's the same thing. As it is written, know where you saw that one, two, three, four, five. It's the tradition of the elder. It's, it may be written, but it's not written in the eyes of God. This people honors me with their lips. It sounds good. I know many people that do that. But their heart is far from me. Clean hands, filthy heart. Oh, my sweet Jesus. Oh, I love you. I'm a Christian. Really? With that marble sticking out in the public? You coming over here condemning us for doing what the Bible says to do? You're a Christian? How be it in vain, in vain, emptiness, nothing to do they worship me? You know how many people are going to get charged with that, the great white stone judge? But Lord, didn't I? I never knew you. But Lord, didn't I? I never knew you. Teaching for doctrines, that's a teaching, that's a lesson. The commandments of man, man over God. That is the, the, the main theme of this, this this Pharisee meeting. You guys are not doing it God's way. You're doing it man's way. And Proverbs says in two or three places, it's the way of death. When men do what God wants them to do, men's way, without preaching the gospel to the lost, Jesus said, you know what? God doesn't honor it. It's not by his word. Better be careful how you evangelize. You just might be just washing your hands and have no credit. Soul. How be it vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines of the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God. Now see that? Jesus has told you there are commandments of men and there are commandments of God. Ye hold the tradition. Well, that's what they said in verse 3. Of men. Now there, Paul writes about there are some traditions for Christians. But this is not Bible sourced. As the washing of pots and cups. And many other such like things ye do. He said unto them. Full well ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own tradition. You rejected God's commandment for the man's commandment. That's, he just backed up verses 7 and 8 about commandments. You hold more to man than you hold to God. Now he's going to give an illustration. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother. That's what God said. You see the inspiration of the writer? Moses wrote what God said, and God, who is Jesus Christ, said, Moses said, Exodus 20, Honor thy father and thy mother. That came from the mouth of God. That came from the fingers and pen of God as he wrote on those stones. Men wrote the Bible. Yeah, Jesus said, Moses Because he was inspired by God. Whoso curses father or mother, let him die to death. Death penalty. 
But ye say, all right, verse 10 is the commandment of God. We know that. That's printed. You can turn to it. Even Paul quotes it. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father or mother, it is Corban, a sacred gift. That is to say, a gift by whatsoever you might, thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. I gave the money to the temple. Can't give it to you, Mom. Can't give it to you, Dad. And the Pharisees and the scribes would say, attaboy. And when your parents die, we'll give you the cut. I, I'm, let's use even numbers. You give the you give the church a hundred dollars instead of giving it to your parents, and your parents die. I, I I'm just gonna just throw numbers. They would give you ninety dollars. They take ten for doing it. That's what they were doing. You know, you, when Halloween night, they used to go out the church and knock on doors and we'll pray for your dead family your dead husband whoever if you pay us and ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother you don't take care of your parents you take care of us making all right here's god's commandment here's men's command making the word of god he just said moses said The law of Moses that they're supposed to ascribe to now, because Jesus has not died, he has not been buried, he has not risen from the grave, is the word of God. I don't care about the commandment of man. It's proper, you should wash your hands, but as far as religious, of none effect through your traditions. So their traditions is opposed to the word of God. So if you were to talk to a Catholic, I come from the Catholic Church. Do you hold to the Word of God or do you hold to the traditions? And they will tell you that their priests and traditions will tell you what the Word of God says. Some way, shape, or form, that idea that the priests and the traditions of the church can't. The Word of God cannot be told to you except by the priest and their tradition. You can never raise the Word of God above that. You're not even supposed to read the Word of God. Which ye have delivered, and many such like things. You, there's so many things that I don't have the time this afternoon to tell you everything that you guys are doing wrong. Now remember he said, come on to me, ye are heavy laden and burdened. This is what he's talking about. Can you imagine you're worried about your soul over your feet? Did I wash my hands? Did I get that little spot off? Made him find a little dirt underneath my fingernails. I mean, you're talking about heaven or hell. You're talking about life or damnation, according to the Pharisees. And when ye, and when ye had called all the people unto him, and when he had called all the people unto him, so he gathers the people together after he balls them, the balls the Pharisees out. He said to them, "Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand." Now he's going to counter teach what the Pharisees have been teaching the people in front of the Pharisees. How can I illustrate this? Imagine Jesus Christ walking to a Catholic church today. He's not going to do it, but imagine him walking to a Catholic church today, going up to the front of the church, looking at him nailed at the cross and saying, People, I ain't there no more. I don't know why these people are teaching I'm up on there on that cross. I ain't there. Here I am. I'm alive and well. And where on earth did you get the idea you're supposed to eat me? Do you see chew marks in this body before you guys? That's what Jesus is doing now to the Pharisees and the people. Do you see what they've been teaching you? I'm going to teach you the truth in front of the people. Now you can't do that today because you offend people and you break the laws and all that. What would Jesus do? He would walk up to a, a religious person who is lying and deceiving the people and crown him out in front of his own congregation. 
But we can't do that today because we got the Constitution to protect religions that Christians hold so dear and love more than the Bible. If it wasn't for that Constitution, I would go to Roman Catholic churches. I would preach the Bible as the Bible says to me because I know a guy who took a thesis and nailed it to a door of a church on all the errors of their way. And they took him to the diet of worms. Jesus bawled them out and taught the people the truth. There is nothing from without a man, outside of a man, that enters into him can defile him. So that, that takes out religions that say, you got to be a virgin. No meat. Meat defiles the body. Well, not according to what he told Noah. God spoke to Noah. God told Noah, you can have meat now. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. Uh-oh. The source is not outside the man. It's inside the man. It's your heart. We read in the last chapter, the disciples hardened their heart. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Listen up, people. Anybody who wants to do right with God, give me your ear. Lend me your ear. And when he was entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. What parable? Usually Jesus has been saying this, this is a parable. They've taken account of the, of the Jehovah Witnesses saying that Lazarus and the rich man. That's a parable. No, it's not. And he said to them, Are ye so without understanding us? He pulls them out. In front of each other. We get too many clicks in the church today that are doing wrong. They're not being balled out. I called a preacher one time, a pastor of a church one time, on the air of his church, and I got balled out. So I don't do it no more. Uh, do you not? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man, it cannot defile him food or water or drink? Because it enters not into his heart. It goes in your stomach. But into the belly. And goeth out into the draft. Drain, sewer, toilet, sewer plant. They didn't have that back then. They would have, I don't know what they had. They would say places, you know, as men gather dung. I don't think I would want that job. Purging all meats. And he said, that which cometh out of a man, that defiles a man. So we're no more outside man. Inside, inner, turn, inner man, the heart. Watch. For from within, out of the heart, that's the source of problems. Jeremiah says the heart is wicked. Even saved. As a born again Bible believing Christian, my heart cut me off. And I'm a sinner. Stay at the light, a red, a green light too long. My heart is a sinner. In the middle of the night, if I stub my toe, my heart is a sinner. Why did I say that? Why did I think that? Because my heart has not been made clean. I am washed of my sins, but I'm still in this flesh. Okay. So, heart condition of men. Here we go. You ready? Shrinks, psychiatrists, doctors do not deal with this. This is why our nation is going insane. Proceedeth evil thoughts. I'm a male. Maybe I should desire sexual relations with that other man there. That comes from the heart. That doesn't come from hormones or genes being born. 
I heard, I heard that when I was in, uh, I'm in classes. And I heard another man just tell, we just love you, teacher. Another man saying to a man, no, yeah, gross, sick. You ever thought evil of somebody? That came from your heart. Adulteries is of the heart. Television. Movies is a heart condition. Fornications, shacking up, is a heart condition. You know how you know it's a heart condition? Have a heart attack and your heart does not start beating again. Will you sin? No. They they revive you. They give you CPR. You come back to life, and there's your heart. Murders. It's not where you grew up in a ghetto or wherever you come from. or it, It's your heart. It was in the heart of Cain to kill his brother. Where did he come from? He came from the imperfect environment. That his parents messed up. If he had anything to blame, he could blame mom and dad. We all can blame his mother and father. No, it's the wicked heart that came into him through sin, thefts, thefts. What is wrong with our government? It's got a big heart condition. It's called sin. Covetousness comes from the heart. Advertising is a heart thing. Wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, that's lustful, loose living. Here's one. Want to talk about the brain? An evil eye is of the heart. Blasphemy against God is in your heart. Ever wonder why people who don't believe in God cry out Jesus Christ in a cuss? Because it's your heart. Your heart was originally to call out before Adam falls, Lord Jesus Christ, I love you. Now, in our sinful state of our heart being ruined by sin, we cry out Jesus Christ as a cuss. Pride. America's got a heart condition. Pride. Foolishness is in the heart. I believe uh, Solomon writes that in, in Proverbs. You drive the foolishness out of the child through a rod. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. Not food. I bet you vegans do these things. I guarantee it. And never had any meat. And watch what they eat. And proper desire. And do that chong ching and, and fong king or whatever kind of yogurt and, and, and stuff like that. I guarantee they are guilty of one of these things. So it's not your diet. Now, if you want to bring to a complete diet and not sin, completely starve yourself till your heart stops, and then you won't sin. The day I'm going to stop sinning will be the day that the Lord calls me home by the rapture, the day that this heart quits. So do you realize if Jesus says it's a heart condition, now think about this for a moment. You're in a coma. Your brain is, you know, they say if your brain, if you are a vegetarian state, you can't think or anything like that, and, and you're running by two. If that heart is still going in your body, you're still sinning. So there is a form of consciousness when you're in, you're in a coma. I can't explain it. It's the heart. Yeah, it's like it's the heart. And we we read somewhere the other day. So one condition people are still they they can monitor that they're still doing things. Well, when I was in the hospital, when I was out. Yeah, strange dreams, fears, anger. And that's the dangers of these drugs and alcohols. You're putting something into your body that doesn't belong, and it counteracts sin. Drinking makes more sex. That's why you want the woman to have the drink. I've been there, done that. And from thence, he arose. So finally gets up. If he arose, that means he was sitting down teaching, preaching. He arose. 
That's not the good news of Jesus right there in the gospel. You know that? There arose from me when he arose from the grave. This arose, he arose after defiling religion. And he arose here victorious over the religion. He taught them, he put them in their place. And went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon. That's towards the Mediterranean. So that would be east, west. And entered into a house. And would have no man know it. He tried to sneak, Jesus can't sneak around. But he could not be hid. So he never saw Jesus alone. He never had any secret society. He never had any peaceful moments. Everything he did was all public. You know what missing lives of Muhammad? And was a 13 year old? There are lives of Joseph Smith that no one knows about. You can't even find those plates. What about the complete life of Mary Becky Eddy? What about the secrets of David Koresh? What's going on with Charlie Mason right now? I don't know. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit, heard of him, and came and fell at his feet. And we learn later more about this woman in the other gospel. Mark just passes right over. Mark, remember, Mark writes about his deeds, not what's being said. But he sure bawled out these Pharisees, Mark did. I like that. You know, you don't see Mark quoting too much. You don't see Mark saying what was said. But when it came to these Pharisees in chapter 7, man, he sat down. I'm writing this. Sorry, Lord, but I'm going to write this. Okay, go ahead. And then we come to this. this we call we come to this, uh, this wonderful story of this Gentile woman who puts Jesus in his place. And he's like, here she is. Yep, something happened. Goodbye. See you. Now watch. We know this story. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek and a Syrophician. She knows what she was. By nation. She was a Gentile. And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said to her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Well, Mark left out the whole thing that she keeps bugging him and the disciples are getting angry again. Lord, help me. Lord, help. Son of David. That's not the call for a Gentile. Mark didn't include that. He cast it to the dogs, the Gentile. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord. Yet the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Now that's quoted by Mark too. Because that's a remarkable statement. Lord, I'll take the leftovers. I'll take what they don't want. They don't want you, Lord. I'll take you. And I'll go tell them about you. How's that? And he said unto her, For this saying, for this saying, Luke 18, 14, Go thy way. The devil is, see the devil, he said unclean spirit. The devil. That Jesus has told you what unclean spirit was. He didn't say demon. Unless you got a modern Bible. If you want the word, de I, I know preachers use it because it, it's just one of those words. That's like going to store. What do you want? A Coke. Well, it's a Pepsi, but we call it Coke. You look up the definition in most of your, most of your dictionaries or encyclopedias will tell you that a demon can be a good guy or a bad guy. It depends on the religion. In the Roman mythology, he was good or bad. It just depends what religion you're coming out. The Druids is just wicked. Is gone out of thy daughter. And when she come to her house, she found the devil going out, and her daughter laid on the bed. Now that's faith. She, she didn't back. Okay, see it, see it, Jesus. You said she's healed. I'm going to go home. She'll be healed. How's that? All because she said, Lord, I'll take the crumbs. And thank you for calling me a dog. You can go, you can go all kinds of places with that one. You know what the habits of a dog is? And look what she got that afternoon. And again, departing from the coast of Tyre. So he leaves Tyre inside him. Tyre was a cursed city. There was prophecies 
concerning Tyranny, that city will be destroyed not once, but twice, the final time, completely utter. And he, re he repeats to another city in the gospel, man, if the works in Tyre have been done there, are done in you, Tyre would have repented long ago. He came unto the Sea of Galilee. Man, he's just walking everywhere. He's not taking taxis. He's not driving cars. He's not hitchhiking. Maybe taking a camel. Maybe taking a dog. I don't know, but that's quite a bit of a distance. Through the midst of the coast of Decapolis, and we've read about that place earlier. And they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impotent in his feet. You, if you've ever known deaf people, you've probably known some who have a hard time speaking because they can't hear what they're saying. And it's a normal, natural condition. It's not nothing to make fun of. And the Bible calls it dumb. And it's not, duh. It's, you just can't speak. But words today in the English American language have deteriorated. The Bible words are great. So, and they besought him to put his hand upon him. Someone came up to him with this with this deaf, dumb man and said, Jesus, will you take it? He may not even be able to speak to Jesus. Or maybe stuttered and he was afraid that he would waste Jesus' time with his foul mouth. I don't mean cussing. I mean... I just can't speak before him. Will, will you speak for me? Yeah, it's the he can't hear the stories. Well, we had the we had the the people that four guys that brought the guy in the bed, and he took him aside from the multitude. Now, why that? Because most of the people have rejected him already. And all he's going to do is just bring more people. To, oh, oh, fireworks. Ooh, ah, ooh, Jesus, can I get a ribbon for my scripture verse I know? Can I get a pink balloon? That was a good boy. Pink balloon boy. Oh, wow. I just messed that one up. I was just thinking of one of the guys in work last name. I don't know paint shirt where was that and he took aside the multitude and put his fingers in his ears now he this picture this now whose ears or his own ears but I mean just put his fingers in his ears did he take the deaf man's fingers and put in his own ears did he take his fingers and put it in his ears and he spat or spit put his fingers in his ears and he spit man you can lay that out four or five different time ways of what was going on here but what they're going to do to jesus to shame him he's now going to do to heal and he does this to a blind man the blind man didn't see where the source of water came from this guy's watching this is the Holy One from God, the Messiah, the, the great prophet, the great man. He just spit and touched his tongue. I would assume that's the one who can't speak. With the spit? spit on you in, in the laws. The, you were the... the, the I think he said that about Miriam, wouldn't you? If your father had but spit on you, wouldn't you be unclean? Yeah. So verse 33 is, is a verse 33. If you really want to have a controversy on somebody on the street, read that one to him. That, that bring up controversy. Who did who and who did what to who to who? You mean Jesus spit? What would Jesus do? Pling. Give me your tongue. Do that to someone. You want to have fun? You want to be as arrogant as I am? Looking up to heaven, he sighed and said unto him. I love this pronoun game here. Ephetatha. 
another word we get to learn in another language. That is, be open. See, there's certain Hebrew Greek words God wants us to know, and he tells them. And here's the meaning. So, next time you go to a store and all that, you'll walk up to the door and say, Ephatada. And the door opens up, and they'll be looking at you, what did he just say? Isn't the word supposed to be abracadabra? Oh! No, Ephatada. However you want to say it. I'm probably saying it wrong. And straightway, his ears were opened. Oh, so they were somehow closed. And the string of his tongue was loose. Cat got your tongue? Don't they use cat? I'm thinking some of the musical instrument, cat strings. I don't know. Let me get my. And he spake plain. That's why I don't think he spoke to Jesus. I think he was a. I think he was thinking he was dishonoring himself before God, or the Lord Jesus Christ. And he charged them, there's two of them at least, that they should tell no man. Come on. This guy can now speak. You think he's going, never mind the pun, you think he's going to hold his tongue that's been loose from the string? <laughs> that's a great pun one. You can have fun with this chapter. You can have fun with the story of the deaf man and dumb. This is comical. This is like over there in the, in, with the judges. And they said, saddle the ass. So they saddled him the ass. I mean, you can just have fun. Some people don't like that. Hey, I like to milk a bear. Get a band-aid or 14,000. This guy has not been able to talk right. And Jesus has made him able to speak and he tells him hold your tongue should tell no man but the more he charged them the so much the more a great deal they published it that's how you know someone's got saved for with the heart man believes on the righteousness with the look how that's laid out in mark and what paul with the heart may uh, I was going to say, with the heart man speaketh. Yeah, Jesus said that too. With the heart man believes unto righteous, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And he be, and were beyond measure astonished, saying, He hath done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak, and in this case, one individual not two. The mighty powerful God is the Lord Jesus Christ. And the sad story is Mark is a short book, gospel. We are very close to now the people are going to be crying out crucify. If you really be God, you can help others help yourself and come down off that cross. Is it human this wicked because of our heart and even this man here Jesus says don't go tell anybody the record truth that would be written on the books is he's rebelling against God by going and telling everybody but he's getting believers <laughs> you want to have fun you want to have some fun in the Bible? Uh, Mark chapter 7, verse 31 to 37. You can have all kinds of fun with this guy. He tells him not to do it. He goes do it. And the, the wording and the, all that, it's fun. I love the Bible. 